Hello and welcome to another Magic 2015 gameplay. Today we're taking a look at the red white tokens. Thanks to the new addition of Young Pyromancer, the deck got even better. So let's take a look at the entire list here. Starting with Two Gods Willing, a card that's a little bit unusual in a token deck since you usually don't care about some of your tokens dying. But in this deck there's quite a few creatures worth protecting and Young Pyromancer is one of them. So it's nice to have a way to protect your key creatures or to at least uh, save one if the opponent plays something like Anger of the Gods. And you can also use it to make a creature basically unblockable to get in those last points of damage. So a pretty versatile card and also increases our uh, instant count which is important for the young pyromancer. Then raise the alarm, just our bread and butter token generator and works great with young pyromancer because it is an instant. Then we have Brimas, not much to say here, just a great card. Also happens to make tokens and works very well with Convoke. Then Mentor of the Meek is a way to go a little bit uh, longer in the late game to have a way to draw cards and is pretty good at that, so if you have 4 mana up, you can play Raise the Alarm, pay 2 mana, draw 2 cards, not a bad rate, and gives you some uh, late game staying power. Then Attended Knight, not running the full amount because our 3 drop slot is pretty um, heavy, so uh, just 2 of them, but it's still nice to have uh, an extra token generator here, and works very well with some of the cards we'll see later. And then, of course, uh, Phantom General, giving all tokens plus one plus one, is pretty awesome. So it doesn't matter if they're red or they're white, all the tokens get plus one plus one. And the nice thing about cards like this is that usually you will already have a bunch of tokens in play, so giving them all plus one plus one can uh, catch the opponent off guard and you can get in for some points of damage where otherwise you would not be able to. So I'm not going to run the full amount because it is a 4 drop and we're trying to stay low curve. But I think 2 is the right amount. And then of course Baneslayer Angel just gives you some uh, free wins. And I think it's still worth including here. We are running 23 lands so going up to 5 is not unreasonable. And then Triplicate Spirits, not a real 6 drop since... You can cast this as early as turn uh, 3, I guess, if you have a 1-drop, even though uh, some of our 1-drops are spells, so you would have to play a Goblin Bushwhacker on turn 1, which is not really what you want to do. But still, at turn 4, make 3 Flying Spirit tokens is not bad, and it's very easy to uh, do that with cards like Raise the Alarm to convoke this out, and also happens to be a Sorcery, so the young Pyromancer rejoices. Then we have Goblin Bushwhacker as a sort of anthem effect, you could say, giving all your creatures plus one plus O oh, and haste. The haste part is not irrelevant, especially with uh, cards like Young Pyromancer, so you could, let's say, cast an instant, make a token and then give it haste with the Bushwhacker. So that's a nice addition, running two of the four, just because we have a few other anthem effects like the general, so I want to diversify our threats a bit and also fits the curve better I think. Then 4 shocks, just a good removal spell, uh, deals with some utility creatures and can also go to the face and is another instant for Young Pyromancer which is a great card if you have it early and even if it only makes one token that's already pretty good, if it makes more that's even better and it's just a 2 power creature for 2 mana that can attack and block, so you can't really go wrong with the Pyromancer. Then we have Krenko's Command, another sorcery that makes tokens, so works very well with the Young Pyromancer again, and the two tokens is also great. Not an instant unlike uh, Raise the Alarm, but still pretty decent, and has a little bit of synergy with the next card, which is Goblin Rebel Master, which is on another token generator that can carry the game by itself and is a great target for God's Willing to protect him or to get him through. So another great card. And then finally Trumpet Blast, another way to 
Pum the team, another instant for young Pyromancer, and great synergy with tokens, since all your tokens get plus, to, plus 2 plus 0, your other creatures as well. And make sure, as always, to use this after attackers have been declared, otherwise this does nothing. And then finally, a pretty spicy addition, Ogre Battle Driver, a 4-drop, that gives creatures plus, to, plus 2 plus 0 in haste when they enter the battlefield. So uh, the dream scenario is you play Ogre Battle Driver, then convoke out the triplicate spirits and attack with 9 power in the air with haste, which is uh, not bad. But even with your other token generators, if uh, they don't kill him right away, he's going to do a lot of damage. So I think he's uh, worth the inclusion here. And then the lands, we're just running four guild gates. You can replace these with any tri lands if you want to confuse the opponent. But uh, for clarity, I'm running the guild gate. And then 10 mountains and 9 plains. As you can see, we have slightly more mountains uh, than plains needed. So that's the deck, and let's give it a spin and see how it does. All right, let's take a look at our opening hand, which unfortunately has two guild gates. But otherwise it looks pretty awesome. We have a young Pyromancer with Krenko's command and a Mentor of the Meek for card draw. So let's lead with a guild gate. Hopefully we draw another untapped land at some point, because I would like a fourth land uh, to maybe go Krenko's command draw to after there's a Mentor in play. And I would also like to play an uh, untapped land next turn which we do have in the mountain, but then uh, we don't have one for turn three. So here I think it's a pretty easy young Pyromancer, since we can follow it up with the Krenko's command next turn. And if our opponent kills it, then we can play another one. All right, opponent leads with a quest for the Gravelord, so I'm expecting a lot of removal here. And Child of Night is a little bit annoying. So let's see here. We drew another guild gate, so a three out of four guild gates. It's a little unfortunate. Um, I was gonna try and shock it if I drew an untapped land, because we could have gone Young Pyromancer, shock this, and then attack. Um, now I'm not sure anymore. Uh, trading seems bad when there's a quest in play. So, let's see here. We could just play the second Pyromancer and set up a big Krenko's command next turn. Think that's worth it here. Might be a little greedy, but I think it's worth it here. There's no Bile Blights in this game, so we're not going to get punished for playing two of the same creature. So worst case, our opponent kills one of our Pyromancers and attacks, and we have to take it, or has two removal spells. I guess if we wanted to play around an Edict effect, playing the Krenko's command was better. But this seems to be a pretty aggressive black deck, and I don't know that they always run the Edict. Alright, Phyrexian Ragers, totally fine. It will block a Pyromancer, but not the biggest threat. Alright, Battle Driver. So now uh, we have the option of playing the Mentor. But I think at this point I would rather play the Krenko's command and use Shock this turn to get maximum value out of the Young Pyromancers. And we can do both. And then we still have the Mentor's backup. I'm probably gonna play the Battle Driver next turn anyways. So now the question is what creature do we Shock? And I think it's the Child of Night, as it might have synergies with... Uh, Vampires and the lifelink obviously gives the opponent two life. Now, if the opponent, because I'm gonna attack with the pyromancers here, 
so let's kill that. The downside, of course, is that if our opponent keeps the 2-2 on defense, then he can block the 1-1s, but as you can see, this is pretty disgusting, what we just did. And let's attack. In black, there's no sweepers, so it's going to be difficult for the opponent to get rid of all of these tokens. And then uh, we still have a mentor and a battle driver as a sort of high end here. So if we ever draw an anthem effect like Phantom General or uh, Trumpet Blast, that would just be game, I think. Opponent decides to take the four. All right. Opponent in a little bit of trouble here. Decides to play Agent of the Fates, which is pretty funny in this board state. His ability is not going to be very relevant, but it's a blocker for our tokens, which is relevant. All right. So we could attack with everyone. I don't think our opponent's going to block the Pyromancers. So we would lose two tokens, get him for four plus the Pyromancers. So that's eight. And then we're left with six creatures. I think that's decent. Um, we could be more patient here, but I think given that our opponent has more cards in hand, I would rather uh, apply the pressure here. And then we can adjust our plan according to how our opponent blocks here, perhaps. It's going to be either the Mentor or the Battle Driver. And given that our cards in our hand don't draw cards from the Mentor, I think I'm going to go with the Battle Driver. Alright, so our opponent decided to kill one Pyromancer with the Agent, which seems weird. I would have probably traded away the Rager instead of the Agent. But that does mean that our opponent will get a 5-5, but that's fine as we're, we're still at 20. So playing the Battle Driver here, which is gonna be pretty threatening for next turn. As in the worst case, we just attack with a uh, hasty Mentor of the Meek. And if we're put on the tax here, I'm certainly gonna take it. But I don't think our opponent is going to attack. He's gonna play a Liliana Spectre, interesting. So now we have to decide, do we throw away the Angel or the Mentor? I would like to see the board state to make a more informed decision. Um, let's see, if we attack with everyone, I don't think we kill the opponent and I don't think that the Mentor is going to change that. So I think I want to keep the Angel just in case we hit an untapped land next turn and can swing with a hasty Angel. The Spectre is a Spectre, so... The Baneslayer does not have protection from it, but it is going to force a chum block. Alright, and there's a Raise the Alarm, which is also pretty good. Let's just play it. And the Pyromancer token also getting haste is just the icing on the cake, and I think this is just going to be a lethal attack. Let's do the math real quick. Opponents can block three of them. That means three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's enough. All right, so uh, a pretty gruesome game thanks to the young pyromancers we played early. The opponent played some cards, but they weren't good enough. All right. I don't think the opponent can do much with one mana up. Okay, and one more block, all right, and there we go. So let's move on to the next game, shall we? All right, let's take a look at our opener, which has five lands, which is a little too many, 
think three lands is the ideal opener. All right, so this is a little bit awkward, but we are on the draw, so the turn three Brimos is probably a reality. And we are running more mountains than planes, so young Pyromancer should be costable. So I think this is a borderline keepable hand, just relying on the power of a Brimos. All right, not bad. Guildgate means our Pyromancer will be available next turn. We don't really have a ton of spells uh, in this opening hand to enable it. And there we see a Hero of Iras, which might mean our opponent's playing some sort of aura-based deck. So I would be able to, I would be glad to trade the Pyromancer with the Hero at this point, I think. But we do have to be aware of uh, the instance our opponent could play to uh, give this a plus one plus one counter. So if he attacks, I don't think I can afford to block. All right, it's just gonna slap an ordeal on it. Give it plus one plus one, he's gonna attack, gets another plus one plus one counter. So Brima's not looking very impressive if uh, our opponent's gonna have a five five by the time it enters the battlefield. But uh, th since we are playing tokens, we will have a few chum blockers in case your opponent just stacks everything onto this hero. We don't really have uh, a removal for this once it's, it becomes too large, but I think that's fine. So we take four here, which is a lot. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a follow-up here. Next turn our opponent's gonna gain 10 of the ordeal. Alright, so a trained Caracal, not really a problem. But does mean our uh, Pyromancer won't be able to attack next turn. So yeah, the tokens versus the auras. And Inferno Fist, cheaper thanks to the hero on the trained caracal all right triplicate spirits is not a bad draw so um, we could uh, play a pyromancer to set up a big triplicate spirits next turn which i don't hate um, because we do have another guild gate here so if we let's say we play the brimos now then next turn we're not even guaranteed to be able to play the triplicate spirits. Yeah, so I kind of like playing the Pyromancer here. And playing a Guildgate and passing the turn. I'm not gonna offer the trade with the Caracal, even though at this point it would be a pretty even trade. If he's gonna spend some mana activating the Inferno Fist, that's fine. Instead he's gonna tap out for a Assault Griffin, which is not very threatening. And just not a very powerful card. Opponent's gonna gain 10 of the ordeal. It's got a 5-5 five five now. So this is hopefully the last turn we have to take it. All right, we get to untap, and now we can just play Triplicate Spirits and get two more elemental tokens, thanks to Young Pyromancer. So now we have some uh, ground defense, as well as some spirits to block the Assault Griffin. And hopefully your opponent just doesn't want to attack into this board. So then next turn we can play a Phantom General or a Trumpet Blast. Let's see, I'm certainly willing to uh, chump the hero with uh, an elemental token. So this Resounding Thunder probably pointed at a young Pyromancer here. But 
could also throw it on a spirit token or at our face all right it's gonna be for the young pyromancer that's fine and is he going to attack he's gonna attack with the griffin and I'm more than glad to block like this if he has a god's willing to protect it then it's better to just throw two spirits in the way instead of three so let's see if this works and it does all right so we lost some value because we had a phantom general in hand but i think taking three down to eight is a little risky all right not bad so let's see, we can play a Krankos command and a Brimas this turn. Don't hate that. And then we're setting up for a big Phantom General or Trumpet Blast next turn. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, we don't really have any attacks, but I guess I can pling in for one with the Spirit Token. And... As long as our young pyromancer makes one token every turn, we have chum blockers for the hero. And once we have a big enough board state, we can just attack for the win. Our opponent did gain 10, so might take a while. And I don't think we have to expect an anger of the gods out of the aura deck. All right, so Inferno Fists is going to probably kill our Pyromancer, which is fine. So now he's just left with a 1-1 one, one Lifelinker, which is pretty embarrassing. And then a 5-5 five, five Hero. All right, then it's going to pass the turn. And here's another Triplicate Spirits, which is pretty awesome. Let's see. I think we can afford to attack with everyone and then just Trumpet Blast. So if he blocks Brimas, um, the Trumpet Blast would kill the hero. We do have to be aware of the possibility of uh, God's Willing in the opponent's hand. We could also just play a Triplicate Spirits, Phantom General and then pause a turn and then do the Trumpet Blast next turn which might be a little safer. I don't hate that plan. Alright, so then we have to... Let's play the Phantom General first. The only downside of this plan, obviously, is if our opponent has removal for the Phantom General, then uh, we deal a lot less damage next turn. Alright. And let's pause the turn. Decided to keep back uh, the elemental token instead of attacking with the spirit. In case your opponent does have a God's Willing and names protection from white. And uh, then at least we still have a blocker for the hero. Because we are at 11, so... Alright, opponent passes a turn, which is great news. So now I'm okay with... A pretty big attack so the spirits can attack Brimas can attack I'm keeping the general back and let's say we keep one elemental back uh, I don't think we can kill the opponent this turn let's see eight actually we might be able to opponent does have a life linker though so let's see five plus 9, 18, plus another 18, hmm, might be a little risky, so let's just keep it at this, and then cast a Trumpet Blast, and let's see if this is enough. That's one predictable block, that's another one. 
and the opponent's gonna go down too. All right, let's move on to the next game. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which is not very good with uh, two trumpet blasts and an ogre battle driver in hand. So I think we'll change and this hand is not great either but it does have Kranko's command plus a possible turn 3 rebel master um, mm, I'm gonna go down to 6 here All right, just because we had a Brimas in hand and a triplicate spirits which were both pretty uncastable with no white sources in hand um, this hand is uh, has the potential of being very good if we draw some uh, spells to enable the Pyromancer and has a turn 3 Brimas of course so alright triplicate spirits is gonna help so next turn we play Brimas and then we have a turn 4 spirits triggering the Pyromancer which will hopefully survive another turn or two not many people are uh, running shock anymore so let's attack here pyromancer connects and let's play brimas opponent red and black there's not a ton of removal spells that kill brimas Augur Spree would be one of them, but not a lot of people play that card for some reason. And their opponent decides to uh, leave already. Seems a little early, but uh, might be a disconnection. Okay, so Rebel Master, I want to keep Brimas back to block but since Primas has Vigilance we can still attack with it um, so the opponent's probably gonna block the Vigilance token that we get from attacking um, so the question is do we attack with the Pyromancer or not and we can't really attack with it if we want to play the triplicate spirits this turn since the token uh, we get only after uh, having to pay for the convoke so we can't use the token we get from the pyromancer to play with the uh, to pay for the triplicate spirits so uh, we can't keep Brimas back on defense unfortunately but if we wanted to play triplicate spirits this turn that wasn't gonna happen unless our opponent blocked Primas, which also wasn't gonna happen. So opponent does get a token. Let's see if he attacks with the Rebel Master, he does not. And I don't think we uh, trade since we have a Phantom General in hand. Alright, so opponent also on some sort of a token deck, but approaching it from the Jund angle which does give him some powerful cards like Beastmaster Ascension and Sprouting Thrynax as well as possibly Spider Spawning so here I think we just play the Phantom General and Smash and then next turn we have the Bushwhacker and let's see not gonna send the Pyromancer, I'm okay with trading a Brimas for two cards. Spirits are attacking, and this guy is attacking as well. Alright, that's a trade I'm willing to take. And let's pause a turn, and next turn, this Bushwhacker is just gonna seal the deal. Genesis Hydra for one. Unfortunately, can't play the My Cloth there. And a Gruel Guildgate. So, 
another pretty swift win here. We can even play the Bushwhacker, kick it, and play the Trumpet Blast. Because why not? So yeah, this deck is pretty powerful. And I think Young Pyromancer did improve the deck significantly. Alright, I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day.